Welcome to Drink Beer, Think Beer, the podcast that gets to the bottom of every pint. I'm John Hall. A quick programming note. If you find yourself in Des Moines, Iowa on Thursday, November 2nd, 2023, stop by the Single Speed Brewing Tap Room for a live audience recording of this very show. I'm going to be joined by Dave Morgan of Single Speed, Noreen Otto of the Iowa Brewers Guild, RJ Tercy of Exile Brewing, and my good friend, historian and author Maureen Ogle. It's setting up to be a fun night, and it all starts at 6 p.m., so I hope to see you there. And now on with the show. There is a lot of uncertainty in the American beer industry these days, especially among the smaller breweries. In what is both a cautionary tale and one of hopeful optimism, Sean O'Keefe of Pontoon Brewing in Georgia is here today to talk about how his brewery was forced to close and to furlough employees. We'll get into that in a moment, but first, a reminder, please go visit allaboutbeer.com. There you can find original articles, reviews, news, insights, and podcasts. You can listen to shows like Brewer to Brewer and the All About Beer podcast simply by searching All About Beer wherever you listen to shows. This show and all of the work we do, it's supported by you. There are two ways you can help out. The first way is by visiting patreon.com slash allaboutbeer. A few bucks goes a long way to keep the content fresh and to fund writers, photographers, creators, and editors. The other way you can help out is through advertising. If you'd like to advertise on this show or any of our shows or on allaboutbeer.com, please email info at allaboutbeer.com. Speaking of that, here's a message from this episode's sponsor. You know that's the sound of another sale on your online Shopify store. But did you know Shopify powers selling in person too? That's right. Shopify is the sound of selling everywhere, online, in store, on social media, and beyond. Take customers from picking it out to picking it up. Shopify syncs in-store inventory with Google. So when local customers search for that thing that they want that you have, bam, you're there. Demand meets supply. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash drink beer. That's all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash drink beer to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash drink beer. Earlier this month, Pontoon Brewing put up a social media post announcing that it needed to close its doors and would be furloughing staff. This was necessary, owners said, because one of its main distributors had not paid them for beer delivered. They have now publicly identified the distributor, and owner and founder Sean O'Keefe, who will join me in a moment, cites ongoing litigation as the reason for not identifying that company. The brewery has been a vibrant part of the Georgia beer scene for years now, focusing on big, boozy imperial stouts and messing around with adjuncts, while also making more mainstream beers that can appeal to a wider audience. It hasn't always been easy, but the brewery has grown, and O'Keefe is candid about what's been happening behind the scenes to get to this point and how fragile it all can be. Right now, the brewery is looking for investors and looking for a path forward to get whole and to make folks whole. There seems to be a lot of announcements these days about breweries closing, and it puts a spotlight on all of the facets that go into running a successful business and how even one piece out of sync can hurt a whole brewery. Here's our conversation. Yeah. Uh, My name is Sean O'Keefe. I am the CEO and one of the one of two majority owners uh, in the company, Um, myself and Marcus Powers. um, And uh, you know, we, we own pontoon brewing opened up. Um, we started contract brewing back in 2013, the end of the year in 2013. Um, and then, uh, contract brewed for multiple years, uh, and then decided to open up our own retail establishment and manufacturing spot in Sandy Springs. So in December of 2017, we opened up, uh, the Sandy Springs location, um, and, had a really big following and kind of blew up in the market. Um, known for, you know, we love our our we love making traditional beer, but we are known for the crazy, uh, you know, the the boundaries that we like to to um, test in the market. Um, and it did so well, and we expanded to the point where we were double what our capacity was in our our facility over at uh, Sandy Springs. So we started contract brewing again. Um, with our cores and then opened up the Tucker location, um, in, uh, 2022. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been a pretty fun journey and, uh, we've made a lot of really fun and unique beer. We've 
really enjoyed the return to some traditional styles so that we can showcase, you know, what we, what we can brew from a technical brewing standpoint. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we're really on track for, a. uh, you know, poised for, for nice growth. Um, we've had sustained growth, um, since we've opened and, um, you know, obviously, uh, a new, uh, a new challenge has presented itself to the pontoon group. When you think back to the beginning and the contract beers that you were making, um, and not really having, you know, the infrastructure or the overhead or anything else like that, um, what was the original appeal for your own space? Um, so when when uh, Eddie Serene and, and Eric Lemus, uh, you know, they they really were the brain ch- uh, children uh, behind Pontoon in its original state. Marcus and I were, um, you know, we all went to University of Florida together, um, and you know, I had been home brewing. Um, I moved to Atlanta and Marcus and I started homebrewing together. Um, and then with Eddie and Eric and, um, they were at a point where it was something fun that they were doing. They, they were both, uh, uh, CFAs, um, making good money. Um, this was more of a hobby to them. Uh, and uh, funny enough, both of their wives got pregnant at the same time and they were kind of like, yeah, this is just too much. We're just going to shut it down. And Marcus and I kind of stepped in and went, well, no, we want to, we want to take this to the next level. Let's, let's do, let's go beyond contract brewing. Um, and just, you know, being a, uh, a nomad brewery, um, let's, let's open up a real facility and make this a business. Marcus and I were, um, I remember the meeting that we had, we, we got dinner one night and we were just like, you know, we, we want to do something more fulfilling. I had, um, recently left, uh, I was working in the medical marijuana industry, um, with Sotera here in, in, in um, Atlanta and he is a attorney. And so we were both kind of working, you know, pretty corporate type jobs and just wanting to do something that was for us. And so we decided that we were going to, you know, open up, you know, get a big SBA loan and open up a facility. And, and um, you know, we took over control of the company and the majority of the company uh, in that process. And I quit uh, my job and, um, you know, became the sole full-time person for Pontoon and we raised money and just, we just wanted to turn what was a fun hobby into something that could have a bigger impact on our lives, on the community at large. Um, And it was, you know, an industry that we were starting to really get to understand and, and know and love. And so, I mean, it was just, it felt like the final um, step to really, you know, put both feet in and, and really take it to the next level. I, I'm thinking back to that era in in beer where for a while contract had been a dirty word mm-hmm. um, and then it wasn't and then it became, you know, that again um, or, you know, people were sort of suspect of it of, you know, well, why are you doing it? You know, like, why don't you have your own stainless? But, you know, right. the, the, the beer was always you know, to, to me, if, if there were smart people making it in a good, clean facility and I enjoyed drinking the beer, you know, I, I, I personally missed going to a tap room, um, but also could get over that, that, that pretty quickly. Um, I'm yeah. also sort of, th- yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I, I complete. you know, I, I see both sides of it, right? Like I see the, you're not, you know, we, we were, we were chastised and, and kind of uh, written off in the Atlanta beer community is we weren't a real brewery. And that's what I wanted to talk about Atlanta. So I'm glad you brought that up. Sorry. Keep going. Yeah. 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 No. So I, and, and I get it. I like, I took offense to it really early on. Um, you know, that was, that was kind of uh, you know, I, I butted head with uh, some breweries here that, that were also making those claims. And it was kind of like, what are you talking about? We're, we're driving up to South Carolina um, at Thomas Creek to go brew with them. Like we were, we were putting in the work um, and, and, being on the other side of it, I, I kind of get where they're coming from. And I, I don't, I don't look down on, on contract brewing at all. In fact, on the other side, I feel bad that I have to contract brew because it's, it's, it's a 
difficult thing to do to maintain the quality of the product to, you know, you don't make any money. In fact, in almost all cases, you lose money on contract brewing. There are very few scenarios where you do not lose money on contract brewing. Um, there's not a lot of margin to begin with. And then you're giving the majority, if not all of it away uh, to, you know, what, who's ever contracting it. So I, I, I understand the, you know, on, on both sides of it. And I, and I'm glad that it's become less of a taboo thing now because it is a good way to get yourself out there. It's a good way to test the market before you just jump in. I think there's a lot of that happening right now of people going, I just want to open up a brewery. And then they open up a brewery and they go, wow, this is a lot harder than I thought it is. It's not as glamorous. You know, the, the ongoing joke that 90% is cleaning, um, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's true. You know, whether you're cleaning up tanks or you're cleaning up messes from all the, the problems that, you know, pop up in, a, you know, owning a brewery, um, it's, it's a constant uh, game of whack-a-mole. Um, and so, you know, it, it's, it, it definitely, it definitely, once you, once again, you step in both feet into, into the, in the business you, it's kind of a sigh of, of, of relief of, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I'm not doing that anymore. But, you know, I'm glad that people are able to do it in some capacity where it's able to work for them. And it seems that overall, the general market doesn't really care about that anymore. Um, it used to be kind of a, like I said, a, you're like you were saying, like a taboo or kind of like a yeah, hand wringing or yeah. It was yeah. All kinds of, yeah. So yeah, but did did the people who were criticizing you then, um, did they come around like once you actually had real estate or absolutely, a absolutely. really okay? Was, yeah, uh, that's what was I was curious because sometimes you know like people just like to complain to complain and then it's like <laughs> oh yeah. yeah well now that they have their own place like it's not my vibe, like whatever it is yeah right yeah I do think I do think that there I, I would say the people all the people that felt that were people that were outside of the industry right they were, they were part of the maybe the Atlanta beer community. There are a few people in there that, that continue to hold some sort of grudge against pontoon. And that's fine. No one's ever going to like you. Um, I have a huge <laughs> issue with that. It's like a huge insecurity of mine. A typical millennial want everyone to, you know, wants everyone to like him. Uh, but it's um, as far as the industry went, that was very much that dissipated almost immediately. Uh, in fact, I had several of the breweries that, you know, we butted heads with reach out to us and go, Hey, I'm really sorry. You know, I'm really happy that you guys decided to, you know, kind of put your money where your mouth is and open up a brewery. Um, you know, is this just a gimmick? And I think that's what it, it's viewed as is like, look, there's already a lot of competition out there. Are they just doing this as a gimmick and just kind of like a, you know, hey, we're just we're, we we want to open up a brewery, but we never have intention of actually doing it. And I think that was maybe what people thought of Pontoon was, oh, they're never actually going to open up one. This is just a fun side project. But as soon as we opened up or even announced that we were opening, every single one of them reached out to me and either apologized or were really excited about it. And it was really cool to see that in the Atlanta beer community. Um, you know, specifically within the industry. Um, and I'll say it, it's a pretty tight knit community and, you know, it's, yeah. it's changed over the years, but it, it still has a lot of love there. And I've received a ton of outpouring support um, with, you know, our recent news. I, well, I, I want to get to the news in a minute, but sure. Um, or the current state of things, but Atlanta to me has been a really interesting market to follow. Um, because there really is diversity among the breweries and what they're making. I mean, it, you could argue, oh, it's a craft lager town, but then, you know, there's also breweries that are specializing in Belgians or doing, you know, the big fun stouts and the other stuff that like you're doing, or, you know, uh, what Todd DiMatteo is doing with, you know, low, low ABV beers and English styles and lagers and things like that. Um, you know, and then, you know, Mitch Steele and new realm and, and sort of, you know, the IPAs and, uh, everything that they're, that they're doing as well with their, it, 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 it's, it's tough to sort of say, this is what Atlanta beer is. Right. Um, but there did seem to be a lot of, um, I don't know, passion early on and, and, and a lot of interest from that quote unquote craft drinker community. Did, did you see it expand into 
other drinkers as well, you know, the the bush light drinkers, the, you know, whatever the, you know, the popular macro is in uh in in in, in Georgia. It's escaping me at the moment. But um d- did you see that focus on local or come and visit us and come see our tanks, come see meet the people who are doing it? Did that translate into beyond craft consumers? I would I would argue that the craft beer, the the like craft beer community in Atlanta is pretty small. Um, you know, I, I'm from Tampa uh, originally. And so, you know, I, I've got a lot of friends in the industry down there that I love and I love to go down and visit. You know, we do a lot of festivals down there. Um, and it's so interesting to go to these other markets, especially like, you know, you know, Tampa is its own kind of uh, its own kind of animal and then you know you go to the midwest or the northeast and it's like night and day it's so different than atlanta and i think one of the biggest differences is that the community itself in atlanta specifically is very small it's a very small tight-knit group and it's not really expanding a whole lot you know there's all these studies about the you know the incoming generations drinking less and and we're not really seeing the translation there you still get the the big bump of the like um, business professionals as they go into the market there's still that social business aspect um that you know provides a a a space for for you know especially like you know you see brews like scofflaw where they're in an area where they they they've captured a, a big market of you know young professionals if you look at like um uh creature comforts and how they sure. you know continue to grow by having that college to to business pipeline um but I would say yeah the, the community the craft beer community is really small and 90 percent of our business if not more is with the drinkers that you're talking about it's the community in general um it's it's really fun when you when you come into one of our tap rooms you know i i, I, I i'm pretty close with the craft the, the that smaller craft beer community um and so you know i'll, I'll see people come through but in most cases, it's people that I've never seen before, that I've never met before, um, that come through that are not craft beer drinkers, but they they found passion and love for this this institution in their community that is a fun place to hang out. And I think that's why you're seeing a big shift in consumer purchasing habits. Um, where, you know, I, I keep hearing this that you can't just have a brewery that just has beer anymore. Um, and it's it's I don't think it's because they don't enjoy craft beer, but it's it's an experience for them. They want to come in. They want to play games. They want food. They want activities to do. Um, and so, you know, this model of, you know, you can just have a, a brewery in a warehousing district that just has beer, really good beer, like amazing beer. That's not what that crowd wants anymore. And, you know, I'm, I'm not versed enough to, to be able to analyze every single you know, market out there, but specifically for Georgia and specifically for Atlanta, we really see it where it is this person that, hey, what do you have that's like Bud Light? And we really tried to make sure that our staff didn't chastise those people, but rather bring them into the fold. In fact, that was always kind of my MO with with Pontoon was, okay, you don't like beer. How can I change that? Let me show you what beer can be. And that's why we started to do these fun things was, you know, you would get people that come in and then be like, oh, well, I only drink wine or I only drink Bud Light or whatever it is. And rather that, than looking at that and rolling your eyes and going, oh, you know, this guy, this, you know, this girl comes in. It's it's like, well, no, how, how can I win you over? What can we do? And we I think we've been very successful with that. And I think the biggest challenge that we had in growing that is how do we capture that in the few, in, in other markets outside of Atlanta? And we have figured it out and have grown really well um, when, you know, I, I hear a lot of people complain about expanding into new states. There haven't been many states that we've gone into that we haven't seen continual growth on. And I think, you know, the way we did it was we had fun, approachable labels. We had fun, approachable styles. Maybe we tweaked what the style was to make it where, it, you know, the name of the style is more lending and approaching like our Blondale. We noticed that the Blondale 
category was declining. So we called it a premium ale. And we saw sales go up because those drinkers know what pre, you know, they see premium on macro. What makes it a premium ale or premium lager or premium ale with a macro beer? Nothing. It's just a name. And so being able to get those drinkers in, I think was a big part of why Pontoon has seen success because we're not just focusing on this small craft beer community because I just don't think that's business wise. It's a smart move. When people think of your beers, um, and I like that, like changing, you know, the name, you know, I mean, styles haven't existed for a long time, but if you can, you know, tweak something or, you know, tweak a name, uh, and get people reinterested, um, I think that's likely good for beer overall. Um, but I mean, I came to know you from some of those, you know, you were, ta- you were, you know, calling them, you know, like, these uh you know these fun beers mm-hmm. um that you were making where you guys were just kind of getting you know getting nutty yeah uh, what, what's like what's a good example or two of of those just just to sort of help yeah. folks who might not be familiar with pontoon with some context absolutely so i mean i think the the biggest the biggest brand that we own that i think a lot of people became like grew to new pontoon with was our smiggles brand um you know our rainbow smiggles brand it was actually uh done as a joke um uh one of one of our good industry friends um bridge patel who owns sprayberry bottle shop um in uh in 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 north georgia the marietta area um you know we 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 would talk about just making just just fun stuff. And he jokingly came around. He's like, you know, we, we should do something crazy. And, and we both kind of were like, what if we threw like Skittles in a beer, you know, the, the, the Skittle brow episode with, uh, with, with the Simpsons, you know, it's like, you know, let's, let's just do something kooky like that. And so we, we decided to, to, you know, and, and, and I think sometimes people have the wrong impression that we just threw stuff into a tank and just like, didn't care about the quality of it. You know, anytime we do one of these, these crazy beers that we like to do, we still focus on the base beer being as quality as we can possibly make it. Um, and then finding uh, flavor components that work with it. So we tested about out a bunch of fruit and we landed on strawberry and pineapple. Um, we added a little bit of vanilla to let uh, lend into the creaminess. You know, at that point, lactose was all the rage and no one was really doing it in Georgia. So, you know, we added that lactose to kind of give that creamy milk aspect to it. We put trick cereal and um, Skittles in it. Um, and, and it's funny, the, the, the beer turned out really well. Um, you know, the, the first iteration of it was pretty clear. Um, it had all the flavors in it. Um, it wasn't too sweet, um, which I think turned off some, uh, drinkers that were expecting it to be like a 450 North kind of smoothie beer. That's what it's become because we're, once again, it's a business and that's what people really want. Um, but you know, we, we, that, that brand has really taken off. Um, that is our, 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 you know, this last year we brewed 300 barrels of it for one month, um, wow. which is crazy. I mean, that's, yeah. that's nuts. Um, and every year it's grown in sales at every single year. And so this is the third, fourth year that we've done it now. And, you know, we always, when we re-release a beer, there's generally a slight growth um, you know, on the second version of it. And then either it dips back down to either kind of a plateau or drops off completely or it grows. And so Smiggles was that brand that's really grown for us. And so once again, Skittles, Trick, Cereal, Strawberry, Pineapple, and Vanilla. And, you know, we get, we get teased for it. That's sure. fine. Um, I see the dollar signs and I see it going out the door and bringing people into the brewery that were never into craft beer before. And all those naysayers it doesn't really mean much to us because you know we brought in someone that didn't like craft beer before and now they did and now we get to work on their palate so that they enjoy the lagers and the and the other things that we love to make um brownie has also been uh brownie batter is a a, a style that we it's our most award-winning style um behind our italian pilsner um <laughs> which is it's always funny i love that um 
but you know, brownie batter has won. Uh, it's it's either two or three times in a row. It's won a gold medal for the U.S. Beer Open uh, for the pastry stout category. Um, we we love that beer, um, and it's it's actually not as pastry stout as people think. Um, it is a big beer. It's forty two around forty two Plato starting gravity, and drops down to you know about. Um, anywhere from 20 to 16 Play-Doh, depending on the starting. Um, so it's a big beer. It's viscous. It's thick. Um, you know, we don't put any lactose or, or extra sugars. It's all grain. So, I mean, that uh, it's a, it's a, a, a minimum 24 hour boil and usually five to six time mash beer. Um, and we're really proud of it. It's a really well sound, well made beer with some dark fruit notes to it. But that beer has exploded, which caused us to create Brownie Bash, which is a, a festival that you know we had done for a few years in Georgia. We didn't do it this year, obviously, um, with all the, the issues going on um, with our distribution partner. But um, you know, we that beer is also crazy and fun. Um, and it's something that's put us on the map for big stouts. We've done big collaborations with, you know, the, you know, some of the bigger and well-known big stout people, um, you know, microphone and, and um, uh, bottle right. logic and weld works. And so like, you know, we, it's, it, we're proud of that. Um, so yeah, those are, those are the two that really pop into mind. You know, we, we we're known for our big sours and, and our big stouts, um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to see the progression over time. Um, yeah. More in a moment, but first this message. Customers are rushing to your store. Do you have a point of sale system you can trust or is it a <clears throat> real POS? You need Shopify for retail. Shopify's sleek, reliable POS hardware takes every major payment method and looks fabulous at the same time. With Shopify POS, you can accept credit cards, mobile payments, and every other major payment method, all with low fees and transparent pricing starting on day one. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash drink beer. That's all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash drink beer to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash drink beer. And now back to my conversation with Sean O'Keefe of Pontoon Brewing. So this is where I'm having a tough time reconciling everything. Um, about 10 days ago, you put up a, a, a note um, about the current situation of the brewery um, and that you're closing your doors, you hope temporarily, um, employees are furloughed, um, you know, the financial situation is is, is, is dire, uh, I think is the word that you used in the, uh, in, in the letter. Um, and in it, you cite there's a distribution partner um, that hasn't paid you um, what they, what they owe you. Um, and that, that sort of forced, this current situation of your doors uh, being largely closed. There's a couple of more days coming up that that you're saying that you, that you're going to be open. But um, when you're talking about this growth, when you're talking about this partnership, when you're talking about all of these, um, uh, you know, great things that are happening with the brewery, and then seemingly there's there's one outstanding invoice that is sinking you. I. I'm having a tough time sort of reconciling that. Can 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 you walk me through it as, as best you can or as best you're able to? Yeah, absolutely. And I'll, I'll be, you know, upfront, um, you know, we are in uh in the middle of a, a legal battle um with uh two two parties. Um you know, one is is a lot more of a, a of a issue because it it you know, involves our future uh revenue potential, but um it, it, you know, it baffles me too. And, and it's something that I, I have to take accountability for. And, and I, I, you know, people that know me know that um, I'm not afraid to admit where I'm wrong. I'm not afraid to take accountability for, um, you know, mistakes at the end of the day. Uh, I am the, the CEO and the main driver of this company. And so any decision that is ultimately made has to be, you know, run through me. Um, you know, I give my staff a lot of autonomy and to to pursue projects and to do things that they want to do. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, they look for guidance for me on on a, a general direction. And so um, it really I mean, I, it sucks that uh, one one major event 
brings down an entire organization. And most of the, what I've heard on, you know, seen on socials and, and, and heard from, from community has been super positive and super sad about the event, but I, I have seen criticism on how did you allow this to happen? How did you send product when you weren't getting paid? And it's a great question. And it's, it's something that I've had to seriously consider myself and think of how, how did I, I allow us to get into this situation? Cause at the end of the day, like I said, I, I have to make those decisions and, and, and pick the right partners. Um, but you know, I, I will, I will defend our actions in that we really felt good about this partnership. We really wanted it to work and we vetted out people that they've, you know, that they have worked with, you know, we didn't just blindly roll into this. This was something that was, you know, we talked for three, four months before we even signed paperwork. Um, You know, we, we really thought that this was going to turn us take us to the next level and allow us to grow without the restrictions of dealing with cash flow and dealing with growing too fast, which you often hear from breweries mm-hmm. that, that struggle is we grew too fast. We kept hearing that. And so this was our strategic move to prevent that, to allow us to grow at a clip that would help us you know, pay our staff better and to um, get our beer into more communities. And it was stuff that we were already doing, but now we had help and assistance with it. And so, you know, it's heartbreaking. It, it, it It's, it's, you know, I'm just going to say it, you know, the actions that are going on right now are, are, you have to wonder if they're the malice and the evil behind it because, and, and, and our space doesn't need that. And, you know, what do you mean by space? Are the craft brewing space, you know? Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, thank you for helping me clarify that. Um, you know, I, I hear a lot of people when they left their corporate jobs or they left the thing that they were doing there in the craft beer space, they love it. They're passionate about it. You know, this is 100% a passion driven business and industry. Maybe not 100, percent but it, it 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 should be because we know we're not making a ton of money. We know the margins aren't great in craft beer, and yet we do it anyway. There's breweries opening up every day, and you really haven't seen. And I, I think that will change here in the near future with all the closer uh, closures that are going on. But we're excited about a brewery opening up next to us. You know, the rising tides raise all raises all ships kind of mentality, and so for these individuals or these corporations or businesses that come in that don't have the right mindset and they're doing it to, you know, they're doing it for capitalistic reasons. Like I get it. It's a business, but yeah, there shouldn't be any room for that because most people that are in this space, this is, they put everything into this business. I mean, I'm going to, you know, Marcus and I put our houses on the line. We every single asset that we have is in this business. We're all in. And so for someone to take that away because I don't really know um, whether they had bad business and overleveraged themselves, whether you know they they're strategically picking us and maybe some other uh suppliers as you know, we're gonna just cut them off and you know, it sucks for them, but you know, we'll we'll continue to survive. That doesn't belong in this industry. And so whether pontoon succeeds or not, we're not going to go down without a fight. Um, And we're certainly not going to remain silent and complicit with what's going on. So, you know, I I said, I I can't get too much into the, uh, the weeds on, on naming and, and, and really, you know, a lot of details that happen, but, you know, I can say that, payment was not made for hundreds of thousands of dollars on product. And there doesn't seem to be any indication that it will ever be paid. And, um, you know, we're, we're working through it right now. We've got a, a amazing attorney that's, that's, that's helping us through this. Um, and, you know, we, when we posted that, um, that, that uh, post uh, last week, we, got a ton of people that reached out and are wanting to invest or buy the business. 
and I've never seen this. We've raised quite a bit of money. Um, you know, I'm pretty proud of the money that we've raised in equity raises throughout the history of Pontoon, but um, I've never seen people reach out and say, this is an emotional investment for us. You know, we want the business to be sound, but like, we're not doing this to, to make a lot of money. I've never seen that. Um, you know, besides friends and family, that's never been the, me- the, the, the mentality. It's like, this is a business. Here's how you're going to make your return. And yeah. so to have this huge community outpouring, you know, a wave of, of just love and support and going, how can we keep this brand alive that we've grown to love? And none of these people, I mean, very few of these people are in the craft beer industry or the, cra- the, the you know, the, the, the craft beer community. These are people that we just have grown to, to know over the years. You know, maybe they had something sentimental, you know, a birthday party or a, or um, a bar mitzvah uh, you know, wedding at the brewery that are like, how can we help? And that's a, a affirmation of what we've wanted to do with this community. And it's honestly, it's giving me fight because I'm, I'm the only person right now really working for pontoon. Um, my, my brewers decided to stay on and I'm scrounging to get together pennies to make sure that he gets paid. Um, but you know, it's, it's a lot of work, but it seems to be worth it because the community at large, I think they, they don't want pontoon to go away. And it's not this, Oh, we feel bad. They're going to close. And then they're going to forget about it in a week. I haven't seen it yet. And and so we, we want to fight. It, it, is that enough to keep things going? Like I I I, I don't mean to to sound callous about it, but no. like, it's nice to have that community support. It's nice to have people saying, you know, yeah, I got a couple of bucks savings, you know, here and there. But given the size that you are, the staff that you have, the infrastructure, you know, bills that need to be paid, obviously, to then get things to 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 where you're at. Um, is there a reasonable path forward do you think in this in this arena um and then i guess the question is with all the growth that you were talking about is there a place for pontoon i i I don't know more manageable like you know less than it is today but still doing what you want it to be doing yeah so and that's really what i'm working on right now um you know after after we sent that post out, you know, I'm currently looking at 42 people that have reached out as of today. And we're not talking about small bucks. We're talking about, I mean, some sizable figures okay. that people are, are, are looking to invest within Pontoon um, because we we have a really good business outside of, of this. I mean, it's really hard for any brewery to survive when they have, you know, just under a half million owed to them. Um, yeah. That's, 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 no, a, that's a, that's a tough, yeah, that's, that's a deal breaker. Um, you know, we, we don't have a lot of financial backing behind us. Marcus and I don't come from money. Um, and so, you know, we, it's not like we can, you know, reach into the trust fund and, and keep us alive. And, you know, I think that's why we're in this situation is, you know, we, we can't just, you know, magically, cause it's not just the, the money that's owed the other aspect of this and kind of, you know, where you're going at is, you know, how's there a path forward? Um, you know, we have to get our distribution rights back, which we feel really good about if that's the, the path that we, we choose forward. And like I said, I sure. can't really comment on that, but, um, you know, being able to get that back, if that's the path, um, you know, we, we, we have a really sustainable business outside of what's going on right now. And it's caused damage. It, future revenue is is basically gone right now. So, I mean, we have to figure out how to mitigate that. And that's why we closed is to at least stem the bleeding. Uh, we're working with our landlords and working with our, um, you know, bank and everyone seems to be on board so far, but it's, it's you know, there's a ticking, there's a, a clock Sure. Uh, that's it's over our heads. And so there, there is a, a path forward though. And and I can't get too much into the details of why, but there, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there have been some recent developments in the last uh, week that, um, and, and shout out to some, some of the brewery friends and you know who you are, if you're listening to this, 
uh, that have no, nobody out. listens to the show. Don't, 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 <laughs> don't get too excited. Well, I'm going to send it to them so that they do hear. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, we've, we've had several brewery friends reach out to us with ideas of how to bring in revenue. I, I right before I talked, you know, talking with you now, I got off the phone with, with, with one of our friends um, in Ohio about, you know, Hey, here's a, a way that you can make some extra cash and get your brand out there. And, you know, we would love to help you and collaborate with you. I mean, that, that means the world to us. Yeah. Um, you know, we had a couple breweries reach out and go, have you thought about X, Y, and Z? And we hadn't because, you know, sometimes you're, you're kind of in a, in a tunnel. And so you need these out, out, um, you know, outside eyes to, to kind of give you some ideas and, you know, at first you kind of feel dumb that why didn't I think of that? But I, I, I need to put that aside and, and appreciate the, the, the love and support that we've received from our friends. And, and it's abundant. And, you know, I, I get a lot of people that are like, how can I help? And then they feel bad that they said that. Cause I'm like, I'm sure you're getting you know blown up about that, but that in itself with, so the support is, is, a, is a huge motivator to move forward. But in, in between all that, we've had a number of people that have reached out and that are like, have you pursued this avenue? And so that's, those are some new developments that, that we're working on. And I think there's a decent chance that pontoon can come back. Um, I, I really do. Um, you know, I, I think it's a, uh, you know, the, the number of people that have reached out to potentially buy the business or invest is is pretty outstanding and and you know i'm i'm blown away with the the figures and with the um the opportunities there so you know that's a, a big step and um you know our attorneys are very confident that whatever decision we decide to pursue we have the ability to get right back to where we were before from a legal standpoint from our distributors um so you know it I very much think that the business is viable and and it, it, right now it's just kind of um, I kind of feel like I'm back at the the contract brewing stage where I'm trying to put both feet in. Um, I just have to jump in and pursue all these these leads. Um, it's it's definitely going to be some late hours, uh, you know, two three three eighteen hour days in a row. <laughs> it, uh, it wears on you, but um, yeah, I want to do it for our community. I want to do it for our families and for all the people that have supported Pontoon throughout the years. Um, I want to do it for our staff. You know, I've, I've talked to every single staff member and every single one have said that pontoon gets back up and running, that they're coming back here. If that's an opportunity, um, you know, right now we're trying to make sure that they get jobs lined up and, and if they find a job that pays them better or, or that they like better, that I'm happy for them. That's, that's, that's a natural progression. You know, that's not something wherever, you know, we, we, we look at as a negative thing. Um, you know, there's only so much you can go within a smaller company. Um, and so, you know, I want it to be a win-win for them. Either we can come back and bring them back and, 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 you know, go back to, to being a pretty tight knit group. Um, or, you know, they, they took their experiences and the things that they learned here and they're able to apply it, um, and help grow some other brand or help grow their themselves. So we want, that's, that's what I'm working on right now for, for all those parties involved. Um, so that, you know, and all the suppliers that, you know, we owe money to, uh, yeah. you know, and try to try to make them whole again. So, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a long road and, and, and it may not pan out, but we're not going to go down without a fight and we're going to do what's right by the, the industry as well, as far as, you know, making sure that no one else falls into the same trap that we did. Yeah. It's interesting to hear you talk about, you know, people reaching out and, you know, but then also, you know, sharing your insights with other folks that might find themselves in a similar path. It, it, it It's, it's a continuation of what you were saying on the different front of that whole rising tide lifts all boats. And when you got into the industry, uh, when pontoon was found, I mean, that was very much the, I, I, I think the, the, the resounding refrain from a lot of folks was, you know, we're all in this together as, as, as small brewers, um, you know, we're all going to compete against each other in our own way. We're all going to be, but, you know, be the best that you can be. Um, cause otherwise you're going to hurt us. And then obviously I think for a while, uh, there were, um, breweries and, and still are that were kind of fucking that up. Um, just by making bad beer or, you know, being you know, bad stewards or, or, or whatever. Um, yeah. But it's nice to see or to hear about people reaching out to you being like, Hey, have you tried this? Because the, it, it does show then that there is still 
a community that exists even in these uncertain times, even in these, uh, you know, really challenging times, I think for everybody across the board, um, that that's just, that's, it's heartening to, to, to hear. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm grateful that you're, you know, talking about this and, um, you know, providing insight to folks, uh, even in real time, uh, because it's, uh, I, yeah, 18 hour days and the stress of everything. I, I, I know this isn't, this isn't easy. Um, but nothing that is worth working for is ever easy. And, and I think sometimes people lose sight of that, that, you know, they, they're going to open up a brewery and it, at some point it's going to run itself and it's, it's going to be this easy thing. It's mm-hmm. never, it's never going to. No. And the only way to make us sane working through this is by remaining a community, calling out shit that needs to be calling out, supporting the people that need supporting, continuing to to really work with the community. And I'm not talking like we're gonna, you know, partner with somebody and it, it, for for the likes. You know, how how can you really expand your community? How can you really be inclusive of everyone in your community and 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 not just 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 say it. And so I think this troubling economic time in the world, it's not just, just not just the United States uh, in the world. I think it's really going to show people's true character. And I think that now is the time to step up, to work with your community, to work with the breweries in your neighboring area, to be real you know, as as the as the the younger generation says, BFFR. You know, be fucking for real. Uh, I I I've I, never heard that, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm on the. T- I'm not part. I'm not part of the younger generation. <laughs> so yeah. I, I mean, I, I I'm I'm not either, but I I uh, I I I love TikTok. So, um, but you know, I, I think there's there's some truth to that, and I think that's the only way that it's going to be able to maintain this allure that we most people got into craft beer for and if we can do that then it'll make it really hard for the the i don't know the fakers to to not make it in this this i mean anybody that's got money can can make it work but they're not going to be in the same community that we are and i think it's really it's like you said it's heartening to see that so many people have have really put their money where their mouth is. And, and I love it. And it, it, once again, it reignites that passion that's been just absolutely beaten out of me, uh, yeah. you know, over the last couple of months. So, I mean, I, I think it's, it's, it's really nice to see. And, and I really hope that it continues whether or not pontoon survives or not, that should matter for, you know, the, the, I, I still feel that way. Um, you know, I still want to see the this industry be the really cool and fun and exciting, and also just um, on the 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 you know the, the the community outreach, the 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 things that people care about. You know, like the the rap magnet movement that came through the Me Too movement for for craft beer. I mean, we had things called out on us for it, and you know, we instead of you know shutting down we we wanted to show that okay we're listening how how can we but that went away it's stop people stop talking about it and i think you know the economy really it just it, it's really just sucking people into the spot of you know survival mode and, and the only way to survive is if we continue to keep doing the things that made this industry what it is and so you know that's what we're going to try and do like i said regardless if we survive or not that is 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 the goal and 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 what i want to see happen and and uh, we're going to do everything we can to to keep it um to to add to it and to to contribute towards that all right before i let you go um i'm going to try to get you out of your Georgia headspace for a second okay. and ask you the green door question of uh, the the premise, if you're not aware, is in the television show, The Good Place, there is a concept of the green door that's introduced in the last season and the characters are able to walk through a green door and be anywhere doing whatever they want to be doing. So if we had a green door on our plane of existence and this conversation ended and you could walk through it and be at any pub or any brewery anywhere in the world, 
where would you want to go? Who would you want to be with? And what would you like to be drinking? Wow. Okay. Um, put me on the spot here. No, uh, I, I, this is a fun question. Um, I would, I would have to say, and, and I, 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 I feel pretty good about this answer. I would have to say I would go back to one of my favorite festivals um, and, and continue to pour for amazing people and hang out with all of my, you know, really tight industry buds. Um, and, and just that, that's the space where I, I'm the happiest um, is, is it, you know, and so, you know, it's, it's either um, mass landings festival up in, in, uh, in Maine um, wavy days. I absolutely love that festival. Uh, my wife and I vacation there every year for it. Just, just the two of us. Um, and, and whether pontoon exists or not, that's what we're going to do every summer. Um, we love it. Um, or um, Zool's festival in Knoxville. Um, Kill the lights is super fun. Uh, um, you know, that or, um, uh, tripping animals, um, uh, any one of their festivals, uh, you know, working with Chris Marino and, and, um, you know, our friends down there. Um, and then this is no, no shade to any other festivals that we go to, um, you know, barn has got a great one, honestly, just that entire circuit. Um, I love it. I love it. It's, it's fun. And, and, and it, it's kind of cheating because I get to drink with all of my friends. I get to um, have fun with all of them and go do crazy stuff and, um, and, and just kind of get away. Those are our, our, our little vacations um, and it's work at the same time. Um, and I, I think it's a good example of, of the, the, the side of community and craft beer that, that I love. So that, that's, that's my answer. All right. That's a good answer. Well, I'll let you get back to it. Uh, I know you have a lot of emails to answer and everything else, but um, thanks for thanks for sharing your insight and sharing what's going on with you and sort of, you know, giving folks a a, a, a peek under the hood. I think it's um, important at this stage of the beer industry to be hearing stories like this, even though it's um, I know painful for you and 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 everybody on your staff. But I, I Sean, I really do appreciate it. And I, and I love doing it. I love talking with awesome people and, and craft beer, like I said before. And so, you know, it's a, I appreciate you bringing me on and uh, asking some really good, insightful questions. And I, and I hope that, uh, you know, people can utilize this and motivate themselves or, or, um, you know, refocus what the efforts are on what it is to, to own a brewery or to be part of a brewery in this space. Cause um, you know, I love it. It's a, uh, it, it, it deserves love. Um, it, it deserves, it's, it's a nice little safe space from the rest of the world, but that's what it should be. Um, and I, I'd like to see it continue. Thanks so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. All right. One more time, a quick programming note. If you find yourself in Des Moines, Iowa on Thursday, November 2nd, 2023, stop by the single speed brewing tap room for a live audience recording of this show. I'm going to be joined by Dave Morgan of single speed, Norinato of the Iowa Brewers Guild, RJ Tercy of exile brewing and my good friend and historian author Maureen Ogle. It's setting up to be a fun night and it all starts at six o'clock. So I hope to see you there. If you need to reach out to me, my email is John Hall, that's J O H N H O L L, at allaboutbeard.com. That's the best way to get in touch with questions, comments, and guest suggestions. A reminder go visit allaboutbeard.com. There you can check out the podcast page, the merch page, and can read great new content as well as the archives going back to 1979. Don't forget, follow All About Beer on social media at All About Beer. And if you're interested in supporting journalism in the beer space, email us at info at allaboutbeer.com or go to patreon.com slash allaboutbeer. Speaking of that, here's a quick word from this episode's sponsor. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. <laughs> Shopify POS is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. 
Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash drink beer. That's all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash drink beer to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash drink beer. Before we go, a reminder, All About Beer has a podcast channel now. Search and subscribe on your podcast platform of choice. Steal This Beer has new episodes every Monday. The BYO Nano podcast comes out on the 15th of every month. And as for this show, Mitch Weber does the music, Jeff Quinn designed our logo, and I'm John Hall. New episodes release every Wednesday, and that's when I'm going to be back again to drink beer and to think beer.